we have two major issues that we are faced in paging. The first one is that the mapping from virtual address to physical address must be fast. In the last lecture, we looked for an efficient solution for this problem. The second issue is that if the virtual address space is large, the page table will also be large. Then it will be problematic to find a contiguous area in memory to load the page table as a whole. Therefore, a solution is to separate also the page table itself into pages and then access page table in a hierarchical way. In the hierarchical page tables, we break up the logical address space into multiple page tables. A simple technique is two-level page table. We then page the page table in this approach. Here is two-level page table scheme. In this approach, the page table itself is separated into pages. So these are the page table in the form of pages. And here we have mapping from the page numbers to the actual pages in the memory. Because page table itself is paged, then we have an outer page table, which is showing at which page the related part of the page table is loaded. Consider an example in which a logical address uh, is uh, on a 32-bit machine with 1K page size is divided into a page number consisting of 22 bits and a page offset consisting of 10 bits. Since the page table is paged, the page number is further divided into a 12-bit page number and a 10-bit page offset. Thus, a logical address is as follows. We have 12 bit P1, 10 bits P2, and 10 bits displacement D. Here, P1 is an index into the outer page table, and P2 is the displacement within the page of the inner page table. This is known as forward mapped page table. So here, if we consider the logical address, P1 is showing the distance from the beginning of the outer page table. From there, in the outer page table, we get the frame number in which the related page of the page table is loaded. And P2 is showing what is the uh, distance of the related entry of the table from the beginning of the page of that page table. From there, we are getting the frame number and D is the, this, this D is the distance of the word from the beginning of the frame. Now consider a machine where the words are 64 bit, then in the 64 bit logical address space, even two level paging scheme is not sufficient. If the page size is 4 kilobyte, for example, then it makes 2 to the power 12. Then page table has 64 minus 12, so to do 2 to the power 52 entries. If two level scheme, inner page tables could be 2 to the power 10, 4 byte entries. In this case, the address will be look like the outer page P1, inner page P2, and page offset D. Here we assume that this is 12 bits, P2 is 10 bits, and then the remaining bits are used for P1, which is 42 bits. So outer page table has 2 to the power 42 entries or 2 to the power 44 bytes. Here we are assuming that each, each word, each entry 
is four bytes. One solution is to add a second outer page table. But in the following example, the second outer page table is still two to the power 34 bytes in size and possibly for memory access to get one physical memory location will be needed. So we have, uh, if we have uh, two level paging scheme, then P1 is 42 bits as we considered just uh, in the previous slide. So instead of using a 42 uh, bit for the P1, instead of that, we can divide P, P1 into two pieces. So we will have three level paging scheme. So here we have offset, inner page, outer page, and second outer page. So the access will, will need a, an access to the second outer page, and then access to the outer page, then inner page, then the actual word in the memory. Four accesses are needed. So other approaches may be using hashed page tables and also inverted page table. If you are interested, you may read this part from the lecture notes, but we will not cover in the online lectures. Now we continue with sharing pages. Sharing pages is possible in a paging system and is an important advantage of paging. It is possible to share system procedures or programs, user procedures or programs, and possibly data area. Sharing pages is especially advantageous in time sharing systems. A reentrant program that is non self modifying code, read only code, never changes during execution. So more than one process can execute the same code at the same time. Each process will have its own data storage and its own copy of registers to hold the data for its own execution of the shared program. For example, consider a system having page size 30 megabyte and assume that there are three users executing an editor program which is 90 megabyte, that is three pages in size, with a 30 megabyte, one page data space. To support these three users, the operating system must allocate three times 90, this is the editor, plus 30, this is the data, megabytes. So this makes 360 megabyte space for totally for three users. However, if the editor program is re-entrant, non-self-modifying code, read-only, then it can be shared among the users, and the only one copy of the editor program is sufficient. Therefore, only 90 plus 30 multiplied by 3, this is the editor, and we have 3 times data pages, so totally it makes 100 and 80 megabyte of memory space is enough for this case. So instead of that size, 360 megabyte, 180 megabyte of memory will be enough for three users. Now consider the example. We have three pages for the editor and one page for the data and suppose that user one arrives to the system. So a page table is prepared for this user. We have three pages for the editor which are numbered as 0, 1 and 2 and the last one is corresponding to the data page. And suppose that the editor three pages are loaded into frames eight, four, and five. So we have editor page one here, editor page two here, and then 
editor page three is loaded into this frame. And then comes the data page, which is loaded at frame seven. So data is loaded into that frame. And sometimes later, user two arrives to the system and then that user is using the same editor program and it has its own data page. And because the pages of the editor program is already loaded into the memory, instead of loading these pages to the memory again, these frame numbers are also used here. The frame numbers are the same. So if there is an access to a page of the editor, it will access the correct page in the physical memory. However, you notice that the data page is loaded somewhere in the memory. So we have a separate data page for the user two, which is stored in the frame 12 in the memory. Then comes another user, user three, uh, uh, desires to use the same editor program and notice that the editor is in the same area. It is already loaded into the memory. So we have the same frame numbers for the editor and we have a separate data page also for the user three. It is loaded here in frame 10. And then assume that user two terminates data two the page related to data 2 is removed from the memory. It was in the frame 12 and it is uh, removed from there because there are other users using the editor program. The editor program should remain in the memory. And assume that user 1 terminates. Also, the data related to user 2 is removed from the memory, but Still, we have the editor programs in the memory, editor pages in the memory. This is the last user using the editor program. Then also the user tree terminates, data tree and also editor segments are removed from the memory. So all of the editor and data area are removed from the memory. 